Welcome back to my tutorial series. I hope you viewed part one, which explored the programs that you're going to need to get started in modding, which include Sense4 Studio, Notepad++, and the program we're going to be using today, which is Zerbu's Mod Constructor. Okay, once you've downloaded the Mod Constructor to your computer and you've opened the folder, you'll see this icon here for Constructor. You'll want to double click or open the Constructor and this is what the program looks like. Now the first thing you want to do is enter your creator name. You can use whatever you like. You can use a real name, a made up name, an alias, anything you like to use. Um, if you're going to be creating mods or released to the public, you may want to consider how you like to brand yourself. So for example, I often use the moniker Sims Model Simmer, so I can use that as my creator name. Next, you're going to want to name your mod. Uh, today we're going to explore the simplest thing you can create using Mod Constructor, which is a trait. So for example, I'm going to call this Example Trait. You can call it whatever you'd like, and then click the Create Mod button on the right. And you'll be brought here. Now what I highly suggest you do um, when you first get started is to click up here where it says Python Settings. And you'll see this option. Some features require Python 3.7.0 to properly export. Um, what that means is you're going to need a program um, called Python in order to export script mods. Um, script mods are mods where you're injecting an interaction. So for example, um, if you have a trait that allows users or sims to have certain interactions they're able to perform, you're going to want to inject that interaction so that it shows up properly in your game and the people that are going to be using your mod. So you'll want to download Python 3.7 as Zerbu has specified here. Uh, I'll link the website you can go to. You can also click the download Python option and I'll take you directly to the website where you can download Python. As you can see right here, you can scroll down and then you'll see different versions. There's versions for Mac and versions for Windows. So you'll just want to choose your appropriate version. Once you have your appropriate version, you click on update and you can officially start creating your mods. At the very top of Mod Constructor, you'll see this option to add an element. This is always what you click on very at the very beginning when you're first adding the particular type of item you're going to be creating. So we're going to click add element and you'll see here on the left Zerbu has different categories, beginner, intermediate, advanced, inline elements and subordinate types. So right now we're going to create a trait. So I'm going to select trait here on the right. And then at the bottom where it says element name, this is where you want to name your trait. Again, since we're creating a test, I'm going to use the example trait. Then you'll click create element or you can click enter and it will create your trait. Underneath the name, you'll see there's a box to add a description. underneath the description box there's an icon option now this is where you can add an icon that will appear next to your trait if you click on the little box you'll get this square where you can select an image you can select a number of uh, from a number of images that are available in game um, on the left Zerbu has different categories you can select from so aspirations buffs events, gardening, headline, it goes on and on. And then he also has multiple expansion and game packs, as well as some stuff packs you can choose from. And you can just choose whatever icon you'd like. So for example, if I just choose this puppet as my icon, it now appears. Now that's not the only thing you can do. You can also use custom images. If you click here where it says custom Im images, you can actually browse and search for an image on your computer. So let's say you've made something in Photoshop or another imaging software 
that you want to use to just click browse, you browse to the image and then you can click import image and it will appear here. For example, if I click browse now and I select this image that's saved to my desktop and click import image, it'll import. Now sizing is something you'll definitely want to take in, into consideration. If I click on this and click select image, you'll see it scales down. It's a little bit blurry, so again, that's why you want to consider size. If you want to replace it, you can always double or click it once, and then you can select again from a different icon to replace it, and then click select image. Okay, next, personality trait. The category. Now, personality traits are those traits in game that you see when you first are in cast, and you have the different categories that you can select from emotional hobby lifestyle and social so these again are if you're going to be using cast traits now that's not the only type of trait you can select there's also if we click here add component and go to trait types aspiration cast traits gameplay traits and hidden traits the aspiration traits again are related to aspirations gameplay traits are added through gameplay. So if you wanted to add a trait through gameplay, which is something we'll explore in a future video, you would choose this option. And then hidden traits are traits that are hidden. Um, the, the user can't see it in cast. They won't see it in their panel when they're clicking on the traits panel um, for the um, that's in the UI. And that's also something we explore later, the different uses for that. For now, we're going to stick with personality trait and we're going to just change it to social. So again, based on what I chose, it's going to show up in the social category of CAS. Next, we have our core buff section. Now, this section contains the core buff for the trait. Buffs in The Sims are used to do a number of things. One of the things you may be most familiar with is emotions. There's happy buffs that your sim gets when they're happy, sad buffs they get when they're sad, angry buffs, and so on and so forth. Buffs can also be used to add casts or outfits onto sims to make their the sims blush, as you may be familiar with Quiet Stacy's mods or give them face masks, and a myriad of other things. Another cool thing is you can use core buffs to add interactions. So let's say a sim, um, you give them the a, a trait that you make for them to be um, overly sensitive, for example. Let's say you create a, a trait that's called overly sensitive for a sim that's always emotional. You can click on the core buff, which is here. You can name it. Or, so for example, I'll call it example buff. And then once you click here where it says open element value, you can add components to it. And one of the components you can add as we click through under actions is social interactions. So once you create that component, you can then create interactions that can be used only by Sims with this trait. Now interactions will go in depth in a future video. Right now, I just wanna quickly show you what you can do. So if I, for example, wanted to make a social interaction, talk about examples, I can make it friendly, funny, mean, mischievous, mischievous, romantic. I can use it as a fight animation, which is something we'll explore later. I can use it to tell a story or to tell a funny story. Again, this is related to the social menus that appear when you're interacting with other Sims. You can choose the animation. And you can also choose the global test condition. Now, global test conditions are very important and they can be very complex or simple depending on how you make it. But what they are is tests that are used to decide whether or not this, uh, this interaction is going to be available and who it's going to be available to. Again, we're gonna go in depth in this later. Right now, I just wanna give a brief overview. But with tests, you can add components and you can add traits. So you can make it so that 
the interaction is only available for sims that are mean or sims that are good or sims that you can do a myriad of things with it you can also do it for certain situations sim info certain ages certain emotions a sim can only do this interaction if they're happy or if they're sad or if they're angry you can also do it based on the outfit they're wearing so there's a lot of different things you can do with tests again we're going to explore this a little bit later uh, right now i just want to give you the really basic um underlying things that you can do with traits okay so you'll see as i'm working there's different tabs that open up and you can always click the little x and it'll take you back to the previous tab okay so now that we've talked a little bit about core buffs the next section we have are the age restrictions now you can make this trait available for certain ages let's say you want this trait to only be available to young adults and up uncheck child and teen and there you have it it's only available to ages young adult to elder you can also click add component and under the restrictions choose species restrictions now this i highly 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 suggest um, if you play a modded game like i do you'll notice that if you have mods that increase the number of traits a, a sim can have sometimes you're um if you use mods for pets to be controllable you'll see those traits that are for humans applied to pets and that's because those traits don't have species restrictions because a lot of traits were created before pets was a part of the sims so going forward i highly highly suggest you add the species restrictions component and make sure you just have allow human now if you want to have things you can do interact with your pet you can you can click allow cat and allow dog and then you'll be able to have your interaction available for your pets you can also add buff replacements so if you click buff replacements you can click this little add option here and then you can actually choose an in-game reference so let's say um, for this particular trait let's say people with this trait instead of being happy the trait that says happy it replaces it with something else or you can create a brand new element to use this is something i highly suggest you play around with and see the different things that you can change with this particular feature if you ever want to delete a component you just click the arrow and delete and then you'll be able to remove it loot on trait addition now loots are actions that make things happen in the simplest way to describe it so let's um say that your um, sim you want them to once as soon as they get this trait you want them to laugh you can click loot on trait addition click this little plus if you're going to add one loot and then click here where it says new element you can either create a new loot something that's brand new or you can choose a game re reference again going with the idea of they're going to laugh you can click game reference and then click this little symbol here next to instance id now game reference means something that already is in the game if you ever want to add something that's already in the game or reference it you click game reference you click on the arrow underneath and click select preset and then here on the left you can choose all loot actions and then there's a search option so since the list is so long i'm going to simply type in laugh and see what happens okay so you see here we have loot that comes up reaction laugh that's the one we want I'm going to click on it and then at the bottom click select preset so now that i've chosen that once a user gets added this trait their option is going to be to, their reaction is going to be that to laugh this is more help since this is a cast trap trait it may not be as helpful this particular loot this loot will probably be more helpful for let's say a gameplay trait like let's say a, a sim gets a trait from doing something or something happening to them but this is just to show you in general how you would add the element you can also add proximity buffs proximity buffs means you will get a certain buff when you're around a certain trait or a certain sim and you can set that that's something a little bit more in depth that we'll explore in the future 
trait origin. Now you can display um, little descriptions underneath the trait, how they originate it. So for example, from reward objective, you can say from crying or from fighting or from being happy, anything you'd like to use to describe how your sim got this particular trait. Whims. Now whims, as you know, in the Sims 3 or Sims 3 and 4 actually, are things that your sim wants to do. Now you can make it so that a sim will have a particular whim with this trait. You can use select preset to choose from things already in the game. So let's say this sim wants to buy a TV. Okay, so if they want to buy a TV, you click select, and now that's a whim they're going to have due to this trait. And you can do a lot of fun, crazy things with this. Under export modifiers, we have custom tuning. That's something we'll explore in the future. That's where you can copy and paste specific tuning. If you are, once you're already knowledgeable about the pro process of creating mods and how XML works and creating your own, you can use that. Default replacement. So let's say you have a trait already in the game you want to completely replace. You can use this option to do that. So let's say we have a, a good trait in the game. Let's say you want to change the interactions or things that appear for, or how the good trait operates. You can make a default replacement and it'll completely replace the one that's already in game. And then there's snippet. This one is more of an experimental feature. Um, we'll play around with this in the future. Now, special cases, okay, I'm sorry, special cases. You can add super interaction. You can add, you can block certain emotions. So let's say when a sim has this trait, they won't be able to get angry or they won't be able to get happy. You can do that. Global trait. Global trait I use a lot for my more advanced mods, like my my realistic restri reactions mod. Um, it can A global trait will add this trait to every single sim in the game. So let's say you wanted every, let's say you wanted to have every sim in the game be able to have brand new interactions um, and you want and you want it to make it really advanced you can use global trait to do that you can hide relationships you can make it so that the person with this trait will never age so that they'll never die you can make it so that this trait will not um, last with the sim when they travel um, this is something you can use mostly for like hidden traits you can make it so that only NPCs will get this trait, so your main or active sims won't be able to have this trait. You can also affect the person who has this trait's voice. So you can do a lot of things with this. Let's say you make a trait where you can make a sim where they're um, teenagers, their voice changes and it gets squeaky and high pitch. Or you can make it so that they're going through puberty and their voice gets really deep and then it changes again. You can do a lot of things with this. Subtraits. Now, subtraits um, is a thing you can use to use kind of a on-off switch. Um, it's a it's it's better explained here under more info. A lot of these features have the more info, and it'll explain in depth. So you'll see here it explains you can turn on and off things by clicking on them through the actions menu. So we'll explore that. I use that a little bit in some of my mods. And then we already explain explored the trait types. Okay, so now that we've explored how to make a trait, in the next video, I'd like to explore how to create buffs, how buffs work, how you can do advanced things with buffs, and also tie that into actions. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, you can leave it underneath this post, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.